Much of our discussion for last week and essentially for the last two weeks has been about the changing of the Qibla. Uh, and our last few ayahs of this section, of yet last week's section, uh, are ayah one, uh, basically ayah 151, 152. And so we left off with فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِ وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ And so here Allah Ta'ala is addressing us and we have command after command after command. Remember me, I will remember you. Be thankful to me, and do not reject. And so, so one point that we made last time is that uh, even if we do not remember Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala will remember us in terms of the way the grammar is structured here. Okay, Fad Kuruni, therefore remember me, okay. and I will remember you. There's no, I will remember you only if you remember. What's the relationship between dhikr and shukr? I think we talked about this a little bit last time, but how would you answer this? Dhikr is before shukr. So dhikr often it comes before shukr, yes. Yeah. So shukr dhikr, you are remembering shukr Allah Ta'ala. Is in and shukr is when something happens to you. Mm -hmm. So it's you remembering Allah Ta'ala, whether or not he has done anything for you, which obviously he's done many things. And, the, and, then, and then you are being grateful. I'm sorry? What kind of dhikr would you do? Uh, I mean, what kind of dhikr will be a whole bunch of things, you know, the, there are the prescribed dhikrs, there's the consciousness of dhikr, so Qur'an itself is, is, is one of the names of the Qur'an is a dhikr, salah is, is the dhikr, and then there's the prescribed dhikrs like saying subhanallah, wa alhamdulillah, and then on top of that, getting to the point where your whole consciousness is the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala, all those things. And then shukr. <coughs> Uh, last time I suggested making this uh, memorizing, at least in English, that dua, Rabbi Auzitni and Ashkura, Ni'matakalati and Anta Alayya, Wa Ala Wa Ladeya. My Lord, guide me to be grateful for what you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents. And then again, there's more uh, to that dua. Yeah. Now, we also mentioned that we have now completed the first juz, the first juz of Abu Bakr. The first bara is now done. So it took us, it took us uh, four whole units to, to finally finish the, the, the first juz. Okay. And so <coughs> the next command, it's the next series of commands. Ya ayyuha allazina amanu, istainu bis sabri wa salah, inna allaha ma'as sabirin. So we've seen this command once before. Okay, what's the command? It's addressed to us, O you who believe, seek help in sabr and salah. Okay, where have we seen this before? This was also stated to Bani Israel, way, way, way back in the, near the beginning of the discussion to Bani Israel. In Ayah 45, was <laughs> the exact same words. And back then I made the argument that here in Ayah 45, this is not a command for us. This is a command for Bani Israel. Now in Ayah 153, this is a command for us. And then, but it's also important for us to look at Ayah 45, uh, 45 and 46, because it also says, okay, seeks help in Sabah and Salah, which is difficult unless you have these three things. You have Khushur, you know you're going to meet Allah and that you're going to return to Him. Okay? You have Khushur, you know you're going to meet Allah and you're going to return to Him. So now let's go back to Ayah 43. Okay. 
so seek, uh, seek help in sabr and salah, which is going to be difficult unless you have fushu, you know you're going to return to Allah and you're going to meet to him, meet with him. But then here's a promise. In Allah Ma'asabirin. Allah Ta'ala is with you if you're persevering. So what are the different types of sabr? How would you answer this question? The different types of sabr or the different things you have to have sabr for? How would you answer that question? Okay, so when someone wrongs you, how does sabr apply there? Well, this is like four classes in a row. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, no, when someone wrongs you, Okay, so, so the sabr is, part of the sabr when someone wrongs you is, is controlling anger, and what else? Think of, think of why they might have done that, they may have done it reason. Okay, so, so then, so sabr relates to the, the, the proper way of responding to wrong, okay, absolutely, what else? Yeah. Okay, so any type of trial, tribulation, uh, sabr applies, and how does sabr apply there? That uh, uh, any time you're given trial tribulation, uh, it is coming from Allah Ta'ala. Right? Absolutely. And so, therefore, you have to persevere through it. Uh, Uncle, were you saying something? Okay. Okay. What else? Yes. Any kind of loss? Loss. Any type of loss requires sabr. And how so? Well, certainly if, it's, if you lose something you care about, or if you lose something that's important to you, you need, you have to cope with that. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when someone has passed away, one of the challenges is to is to understand how to how to continue to live with with uh, with this loss. Absolutely. Essentially speaking, uh, there are commonly spoken of uh, we commonly speak of three main types of sabr. All the examples you gave were essentially the first type, which is musiba. Anytime you are hit with musiba. Uh, that requires sabr. And so you gave three really good examples. One is if someone's wronged you. Uh, another is when you've lost something. And another, what was the example you gave? Uh, oh, just trial and tribulation. A general, general, general trial and tribulation. Absolutely. So, uh, sabr from Siba. The other types of sabr, uh, they get very, it's very easy. Uh, the second type is sabr in what we would call uh, 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 obedience. So when Allah Ta'ala, for example, in this ayah 153, is telling me to seek strength in sabr and salah, he's telling me to do salah, okay, that takes, that takes sabr also, to be able to not only do salah, but to do it on a regular basis. Yeah, to get up in the morning, that takes, that takes sabr, yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir? Please remember the third one. The third one. Well, I would say that's that's part of all three. The third one is sabr against masia. So what's masia? Disobedience. So essentially, sabr uh, trial, trial, and tribulation. Sabr in terms of obedience, and then sabr against disobedience. Yeah. By that you mean avoiding sin. Right? Avoiding sins, exactly. And again, think of the idea of sabr. Like uh, commonly in many of our Muslim cultures, when we speak of sabr and we say patience, we often speak of it as you don't do anything. Right? But sabr is you keep moving forward. Right? Sabr is you keep moving forward. So, so in the case of sin, uh, it means not only do I stay away from sin, but I'm also staying away from sin on a regular basis. So that is uh, disobedience? Yeah. And what about the meaning of sabr with perseverance, um, steadfastness? It's, it's, is that more the obedience part of it? When something's difficult and you keep trying, not a, a loss or whatever, but a PhD program or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's the basic. Yeah. Yeah. The basic. I would say that uh, uh, it's still the same idea that you keep persevering forward, right? It may be that I'm hit with such uh, a hard trial that it's almost as though I can't do anything now for a while. So think, for example. The the uh, the surahs that the Prophet peace be upon him received surah, 
of Duha and Surat al Inshira. When does he receive these? After the walk. Mm-hmm. Sorry? After the walk. Say it again? The, the pause in the revelation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this yeah. is early in his in his prophethood, peace be upon him. For a long time, he doesn't receive any revelations. And so what is he being told? Okay, as true as the morning is, as true as the night is when it is still, uh, your uh, your Lord, your Rav, you know, has not given up on you, nor is he displeased. Okay? Your future will be better than your present. And you will find that your Lord will, will, will you'll be happy with, with, with your Rav. Okay? And then the examples that are given, were you not orphan, he gave you shelter, were you not lost, and he died of you, and were you not in need, and he made you independent. Therefore, do not treat the orphan with harshness, harshness, nor repulse the people who are coming to you for help, and proclaim the bounty of Allah Ta'ala. Okay. Now, Surat al Inshira takes this last point uh, a step further, this point that he has to proclaim what Allah Ta'ala has given. Okay, have we not expanded your breast? Now, what does this mean? Like, huzn, when we speak of huzn or depression, it's this feeling of you're being constricted. So ex- being expanded is essentially the, uh, the the opposite, and we remove from you your burden, which which you know bore down upon you, and we raise your esteem, and so we all know this ayah fa inna ma fa inna ma al usri usra inna ma al usri usra. Indeed, with difficulty is ease, with difficulty is ease, and then notice the language here. When you are there, therefore, when you are ready, then labor hard. And then turn all your attention to Allah Ta'ala. So the point being that sometime when we are hit with trial, uh, it really knocks us down. Mm-hmm. And and when you're ready to get back up, then run at full speed. So we also have a hadith that the difference between a hypocrite and a believer is like a stalk of wheat. A hypocrite is like a stalk of wheat that gets knocked down and it's broken and it doesn't get back up. Whereas a believer is like a stalk of wheat, it gets knocked down, and eventually it springs back up. So the point is that we all have those periods too. It keeps turning in yourself all the time. Essentially, mm-hmm. every, every day that I find an inspiration, you go to work, you can find your teeth pulling the anything that you come across, especially in this country. Of Traffic and the struggle of every day, basically, the summer would apply everywhere. Sure, I would say it does. I mean, but there's different levels. I mean, the, the struggle of, of traffic is not the same as the struggle of you know, losing a loved one. Right? So, yeah, I mean, summer is it's about the entire day. Question? <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So now let's take this a step further. Here's another uh, um, interesting eye. Okay, so do not say, or if you do not say, liman fi about those who are killed in the way of Allah, amwatu. Do not say that they are dead. Bal, meaning no. Ahya'un, they are living, walakin, but, and but, la tashurun, but you can't, you can't tell, you, you don't perceive it. So how do we commonly understand this? Do not say about those people who are killed in the way of Allah that they're dead. You know, they're actually living, you can't tell. Yeah, we use, we, we say this about the shaheed, absolutely. Where are the shaheed? Yeah, are they in paradise? Are they here? Where are they? deeper point that I'm making is that when we think of life and death, how do we think of it when someone dies? Here's their body and their soul and the soul has left their body. And look at it as though, okay, your default state is your soul. Your body is just this additional portion of you. Your default state is your soul, not your body. So for example, when we say Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we give salam to him, sal- uh, salawat to him, what happens? It goes to him. Sorry? It goes to him. It goes to him. It goes to him. It goes to him.
goes to him, and then what does he do? He receives it. Yeah, he receives it, and he responds. Yeah. How? Yeah. Sorry. I've heard he's living somehow. Yeah, so he's in some form of living condition. Uh, and so, take this a step further. What about the other prophets? Are they living? No, because when uh, yeah, on each uh, level, he met uh, Okay. Okay, but didn't he meet everybody twice? Because yeah. first he meets them in Jerusalem. And then he meets them again in, 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 in uh, paradise. Right. So what am I essentially saying? That we often think of death just according to, okay, your heart stops. And what I'm saying is, uh, from our perspective, try your best not to limit it to this. Uh, there are some people, some scholars, who say that every year, all the prophets make hajj. These are examples of people who are actually, we're seeing that their body is still preserved. saying is that something is not automatically fees of even law. Well, a person who gives others who would sell sure. to learning and for other services. Okay. They don't do it for selfishness. But sure. they're, they're not getting that selfishness is not wrong. If it's some fees of even law, we're not necessarily disagreeing, but I'm just tweaking the point. Yeah. Yes. So getting back to your first point then, the question would be, since you said we are, the corporal body is just a vessel of the Hades, that term. That of what is life and what is death. So what this is often looked at also <coughs> to mean is that death is when your animation ceases. See what I'm saying? Okay. So do you have consciousness when you're dead? In our tradition, do you have consciousness? Yeah, you do. But you don't have animation. You don't have control over yourself. And so how this is also looked at is that people who are killed in the way of Allah Ta'ala, that part does not end. That's how? Right. I don't know. The animation? Mm -hmm. And it may be, it's in paradise. Okay. Maybe it's they're walking yeah. straight into paradise and that animation is taking place. <coughs> but it's but not for common people, but there are some people who do have contents after death. Yeah, and there's many examples. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of examples. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, what, how do we relate on some things Yeah, this is, this, is, this is something that's especially big news these days. Okay, so, so there are two books that have been bestsellers. One is about an eight-year-old kid, and another is about a neurosurgeon. And both of them said <coughs> in these separate books that okay, I went to paradise, and I saw this and this and this and this, and then I came back, right? Mm -hmm. And so a neurosurgeon says this, and then also this eight-year-old kid. And part of the argument for the eight-year-old kid is that I saw this and this and this, and the parents said there's no way he could have known this. And he, like, I saw these family members. 
the parents say there is no way for him to know this. And so, uh, who knows? Yeah, I mean, uh, did he actually go to paradise? That part I'm skeptical about. But did he have an amazing experience? I have no problem believing that. Yeah. Sorry, another question. Yeah. You, you said animation would be like a You mean animation corporal control, or are you talking about free will? Uh, that's a good question. I, I wouldn't be able to go that far. I mean, it might be one or both. Yeah. Yes. Do we not think any um, um, that concept of going to heaven and seeing your relatives? Mm -hmm. That's a very common non-Muslim thing to hear. Mm -hmm. But I don't know about any of our stories of post-death, except for maybe miscarried children who come and find you. Mm -hmm. and but do we have any concept like that? Have you go and find? Well, we I do. thought you're on your own at that point. We right? do have many stories of people who appear in dreams, mm -hmm. and where multiple people will have the same dream about the same person. And so is that really that person, or is Allah Ta'ala all giving them the same dream or something? I mean, there's examples of, okay, a guy dies in Mecca, and then a whole bunch of his students in North Africa, and this is a thousand years ago, so there's not much communication or the that we have, and a whole bunch of people have the same dream that he's just died, right? Or that he's come back to them, and in this dream, people ask him, okay, how'd you get to Jannah? And he said, of all the things, the thing that really got me into Jannah was that on a weekly basis I used to teach these women how to read Al Fatiha. Right. So, I thought really our Prophet said that said they say it cannot be if if somebody sees him in dream, he's real. So if you see the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, that is looked at as being real. real yeah. Meaning if you see anyone else, then yeah. potentially it's Shaitan. Yeah, yeah. And the but question is what if you see another prophet? What if you see Isa I guess, Islam? Uh, there you find it in debate. I uh, uh, I stopped doing this like in my one of my early classes. In fact, I didn't ask this question. A student, a Muslim student, in the, cl in the class asked. She asked the whole class, "Have any of you seen Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in a dream?" The whole class is non-Muslims, and then four people raised their hand. Really? One of which was an atheist. Really? And the atheist, his dream was a horse race. Mm -hmm. It was a horse race. It was Muhammad, peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salam, and the Buddha wow, racing is? against each other. And he said it was neck and neck between, the race was neck and neck between Muhammad and Isa alayhi salam, and then Muhammad took the lead and won. Yeah. And Buddha was way behind everybody else. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, really? I mean, why we need yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, why, uh, they don't have any reason to make this up. Oh. Another kid in the class, his father was a Pentecostal preacher, mm. and he had a dream about Prophet Muhammad. So the point I'm making is that uh, it's definitely possible for non-Muslims to have views of the Prophet peace be upon him. And what does it mean when you see another Prophet? You know, I wouldn't trust. But even if the non-Muslim sees, it's still it's the Prophet. It's Shatan still the Prophet. Him. It's still the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And okay, now let's take it a step further. Like in our culture, when someone sees the Prophet peace be upon him, it almost seems like a, a feeling of honor, right? But sometimes when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is coming to you in a dream, he's coming to you to give you what you need. So one thing that I noticed, uh, sometimes I have students, and it may or may not make a difference, but all these students were girls. And I keep getting this question. Uh, these students were college age, they asked me, okay, what does it mean when, when you're a kid, you see the Prophet, peace be upon him, in your dream, but you don't see him when you're an adult? Now, what was common among all these girls? They're all abused. And they saw the Prophet, peace upon him, at the time of their abuse. That in their dreams, the Prophet, peace upon him, was telling them, don't go here, don't go there. Or you're, you're okay or you're good. Okay. Um, Will you get your, 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 your spouse? It'll be the heavenly version of your spouse, at least. Okay. <laughs> the question is, you know, are you going to get your spouse? Yeah. Yeah. In some lecture, I heard that they say that uh, when the spouse dies, then the, that relationship is finished? Legally, but not necessarily spiritually. No. 
So legally, yeah, you're, you're no longer married, right? I mean, this becomes, uh, for us, it's not very much of an issue, but we know like in certain, certain Hindu traditions that becomes a real, uh, you know, you're still married forever, right? Um, I mean, even Christian tradition, you know, till death do you part or something. But for us, uh, marriage is a social contract. So when death is one way to end, end the social contract, but spiritually, you know, I mean, Prophet yeah. Muhammad, peace upon him, still spoke about Khadija, yeah, you know, long, uh, male abuse, but long after she died. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, to make, take, a for, uh, take a point further, Aki, um, mm -hmm. so in Jannah, then you'll have many people, many potential spouses, <laughs> but the one that you like the most is your spouse from Jannah. No, no, but as far as you know, it's not Khadija. It's not Khadija. It's not Khadija. Really <laughs> <shocking. laughs> no. Well, okay, well, look at it this way. Okay, the rules of heaven <laughs> don't apply. The rules of heaven <laughs> don't apply. <laughs> are not the same as the rules of earth. Uh, so even gender might not be the same. It doesn't oh, mean yeah, you'll, you'll be a male instead of a female, but it means that there might uh, there might be something different than yeah, male so and females. That no, no gender. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. Yeah. About the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dream just now, if let's say it is not a dream, the person is just like, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, is alert. And then when he's praying, he remembers the, the prophets. And then suddenly there's like, uh, like a flash of someone that he, uh, the person didn't really imagine that, that but is that is also counts as he's uh, looking at the prophet okay. because he's not dreaming. Not well, mm -hmm. um, there are there are some sheikhs, some very like they're like real sheikhs, that if you're going to go talk to them, uh, they ask you a couple questions. One is, okay, are you are you yourself, you know, what we call Sayyid, right? Are you Sayyid or Shari? They also ask you. Family of prophets. Yeah. 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 They also ask you, how many times have you seen the prophet peace be upon him in person, like right in front of you while you're awake? So you see this in in Imam Al Ghazali's writing. He says that that's possible. Mm -hmm. Right. It's one thing we talk about seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when you're sleeping. Yeah, Imam Al Ghazali is talking about seeing him when you're awake. Mm. I've never. Okay, so now let's look at now let's look at some of the tests. Uh, the whole discussion for today is basically about sub. Yeah. So, walanabluwanakum. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this translates uh, literally as we definitely, definitely, definitely will test you. Okay. in with something min al khauf which is fear. Uh, 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 so this is hunger. So loss of, of your wealth. Loss of, of life. Loss of the fruits. And here he adds fruits of your labor. Okay. So this is a guarantee that you are going to be hit with summer. And think about this, we already know this because all the way at the beginning of the surah, what did we say? We said that this book is guidance for those who have taqwa. And how do we translate taqwa? To have, take a shield, to make, a, 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 to make Allah Ta'ala your shield. But what is a shield? A shield is protecting you from the things that hit you. So we're saying that part of the design of this dunya is you are definitely going to be hit. There is no escape. So this is this is uh, essentially uh, you can call it a promise. So, so 
children and things like um, Kathleen or these come, they are the test of the sub. This as is not a punishment as local. Well. So yeah, so this, yeah. Is, this is the important point that we often, uh, sometimes when it's a big natural disaster, we say that this is a, you know, it's a punishment for their yeah, sins. So. No, we can't say that. No, in my case, it might be like a punishment because I did this wrong, this wrong, so I'm not ready. And, yeah. and when the, when the, but you look at essentially everything in dunya as a test. It may be that Allah Ta'ala is giving you something because of your sins, you specifically, we can't look at a whole community this way. And it's also different because at the time of the previous prophets, the whole community was destroyed. Yeah, yeah, right. right except, for, except for some of the believers. Right. And, yes? Question about etymology. Does the law here mean and as it's translated here, or does it mean or, or uh, both? Uh, the law at the very beginning of the ayah? So, uh, uh, so what's the question? Is it in the end or, or in other words, are we all going to get each one of those? Oh, nice question. Or are we going to get some, some people because of some of them? Uh, I think because, uh, Allah knows best, I think because of the Dishayin, it would be and or. Yeah. And definitely. Yeah. So, Dishayin, you will be tested with something of the following. Right. So it's not limited to one, but it's definitely not, in my understanding, applying that you're going to get all of them. Understand the question? Meaning, uh, 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 Kishore is asking, are we going to be hit with all of these? Are we going to be hit with fear? Are we going to be hit with hunger, loss of loss of wealth, loss of life, and so on and so on? That I don't think it's I don't think it's going to necessarily be the case. Yeah. But I'm saying, in terms of the way it's written, it seems like you're going to be hit with some something from here. Yeah, you want to scare. Yeah. Scared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, less than how many does it have all of them? Yeah, yeah. 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 Essentially, it takes about nine days to apply. In this world, in this world, there's very, very few uh, kind of happiness. One tiny happiness and then loads of trouble and then struggles <coughs> and you know, there. This essentially gives you that you put your faith in God, everything will be okay. Sure. I think this is basically, mm -hmm. then Allah knows all these things, this is purposely done. This is in his design of life, and you go about your life by the name of Christ. I think that's what it is. In a, way, in, a, in a very, very simple sense. What's missing from this list? We have fear, we have hunger, loss of wealth, loss of life, uh, loss of fruits. I was saying giving you wealth, you know, being tested with so here, abundance or whatever. Yeah. So the tests that are here are basic things where mm -hmm. take, things are taken away. Absolutely. What else? Is it your iman? No. So you're not. It doesn't say you're going to. We're going to test you with losing your iman. Yeah. And what is the point here? That's my choice. Okay. Oh. Right. Yeah. So what happens? It's very easy for for me to think good of Allah Taala mm -hmm. if you know I'm not feeling any fear. Mm -hmm. You know, if if I have no worry about food if I'm getting all my income and everything. But when does my Iman really get tested in all these cases? So the point is that that becomes my choice. Sabr is to persevere, and that's Iman, right? That Allah Ta'ala is giving me this test. The test is coming from Allah Ta'ala. Yeah. And so I go through. I have a strange faith because a person really okay. that it's, it's very common in all the traditions, yeah. because most people, when they're blessed with a lot of things, will forget to do sugar. Yes. They'll attribute it to themselves. Yeah. So, would that necessarily be the harder test? Or, I mean, obviously, emotionally, it's much harder. Mm. But I'm saying, from, yeah, a, from a, from a long-term mm. pocket standpoint, it looks like most people seem to be, I guess they call it saying, this is harder than it. When you look at all the Sahaba, Sure, sure. Well, I would say that it is not a promise from Allah Ta'ala that He's going to give us prosperity. Uh, it is a guarantee He's going to give us loss. No, I'm just, I was coming but, okay, so you're asking, okay, uh, which one's it? You were saying this is harder, and I was saying okay. is it hard, also hard to do? I would agree, I would agree. Yeah. People don't give sugar and they'll let them acknowledge that. If, uh, if uh, um, 
So for example, if we look in, if we look in Surah 57, Surah Al-Hadid. You might have looked at these eyes before. Okay. So, yeah, so I 22 and 23. Okay, no misfortune happens to you. Ma asaba min musibatin fil ard. No misfortune happens to the earth, except or within yourselves, except that it was already pre-written. Okay. Why? So that you don't despair by what you've lost. Meaning, so anything you've lost, it's written that you're going to lose this. Okay. And what's the second part of the ayah? Or so that you don't boast about what you have. So all the wealth that I have is a favor from Allah <coughs> Ta'ala, right? So you look at that as also being written as your risk, right? So I would say, uh, for some people, the more difficult challenge is, is, is being grateful, right? And for other people, the more difficult challenge is, is dealing with loss. But the promise, there isn't a promise you're going to have prosperity, right? But there's a promise that you will have. patience of value. Uh, we even have a teaching in the Hadith literature that, okay, paraphrasing a number of Hadith together, that, okay, you're going to get rewarded for each of the things you do, but if you have sabr, your reward is going to be unending. And so think of sabr as being like the root of the tree of just about all they could do. Right? Because uh, uh, if I have sabr, then I'm going to respond properly to whatever is getting hit, whatever I'm getting hit with. As opposed to, okay, I can believe in the fairness of the law. I don't believe this person is treating me fairly. You know, that becomes a major thing. So I'm saying summer is one of those central traits that 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 can give you benefit in every single aspect of your life. That if you have to choose, okay, do I focus on charity or do I focus on summer? Uh, even for something like that, summer might be better. I think we all know people like this. I think we all know people who, who dealt with loss, uh, uh, with, with what we call dignity and, and, and perseverance. I think uh, uh, a lot of the time we don't give attention to those people because it's so common. Right? <laughs>
obviously more valuable. Yeah, I think so. was about the Pibla. So the Pibla in Kabla, okay, now we face the Pibla. But that was also an exercise in Sabr, Sabr in obedience. And so now this is a, a different conversation on Sabr. So we will definitely be tested. This is a promise we're going to be tested in any of these things. And then we have an instruction, another instruction. Give good news to those who persevere. So now think about this point. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, was in Mecca, the Quraysh, at first they ignored him, or they laughed at him. Then, as he continued preaching, more and more people were following him. Then uh, they started resorting to, to taunting, taunting him and his followers. And then when that wasn't enough, then they started character assembling for the nation, especially when the Prophet, peace be upon him, when the pilgrimage was taking place and all these people were coming. Then the Quraysh started telling everyone, don't listen to Muhammad, he will he will bewitch you, he'll do all these nasty things. And then when that wasn't enough, then they tried to bribe him, right, through Abu Talib, okay, tell Muhammad, peace be upon him, okay, whatever he wants, we'll give to him. And when that didn't work, then they started torturing his followers. When his followers were getting tortured, like Yas and Sumayya, may Allah be pleased with them, what was happening to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? But like he wasn't being tortured, so what was happening? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Maybe yeah. 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 It may have been a torture for him also, right? Yeah. Just, you know, this, this point of feeling yeah. bad. Yeah. But there are even narrations that while his followers are being tortured, he is sitting in the shade of the Kaaba. Yeah. What should he do when his followers are being tortured? Praying for. So praying for them. But should he jump into the torture himself? Sorry? Torture himself? Should he? Jump what? Jump. This is, this is a, a, a real difficult point. He, his is what? What is his instruction from Allah Ta'ala? Summer. But what is he supposed to be, is he supposed to be doing? Sorry? Well, to them he has to be giving glad tidings, otherwise he has to keep doing da'wah. Knows that if he does dawa and people embrace his message, what's going to happen? They're going to be tortured. So should he slow down? But his instruction is that he has to keep doing dawa. But the people he know what they're getting into. Right? So what happened to you if you were in Makkah? You're probably going to get kicked out of your family. You're probably going to lose any wealth. Right? We all remember the story of Musab. Right? Bin Umair, that he was so wealthy, he never wore the same clothes twice. And he was so wealthy that you could walk to the market, you knew he was like an hour later because his, his he had so much, uh, what we you know, like, yeah, fragrance and stuff. I was going to say cologne, but cologne is right word. But then what happened to him when he became Muslim? He only had one shirt. So when he died, he died, he didn't even have a shirt that was long enough. Right? And so, actually, I might be confusing those two stories. No, but he did die with just one shirt. But let's flip that. The prophet's sabr during the torture was that he had to continue to you know, keep preaching. The followers' sabr was that they had to withstand it. What did the prophet do in the time of war? Why did he get his fighting He was fighting physically. You never heard anybody was killed in the fight. He was killed by his hand. Yeah. And he would, he would even run fast. 
fastest in the battle. Uh, so by the time the battles took place, he's in his upper 50s. And the younger people, he ran so fast into, into battle that we had to try to catch up to him. as 40 men. So there are the narrations that, for example, uh, Ali, may I be pleased with him, was strong. Abu Bakr, how big was so, He was a small man. He was small, that like his back. He could hold the Prophet, peace be upon him, up on his shoulders. Ali could not. And they connected not to physical strength, but to the, the nature of Abu Bakr. So there's the other famous example of this wrestler who beat everybody, and the Prophet beat them. So there is probably something else. I mean, this, is, I mean, this is more of a joke. I had this Syrian student at, uh, at the school. Let everyone know that I have the strength of eight men, right? And I told him, okay, that means you have the strength of eight men. <laughs> <laughs> Give good news to those who person saw. What else is this also saying? That when people are struggling, you have to be in contact with them. Okay. So in terms of what we would call like pastoral type care, that comes with them who struggle, what often happens? Everybody leaves them. And any of us who've gone through struggle, like if you've lost a, a family member or something, People who come to the out there have such pleasant, you know, say nice things. Right? And so the point is that the outward instruction is okay, give good news to people or those who persevere, who have suffered. But when are you going to be in that situation? If you are in the company of those people who have, who are who have going through any struggles. Yes. Um, does this come off as one of the commands? Like one of the this commands? is one of the commands. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this is a command singular. So it's a command on each and every one of us. Exactly like the third command. Right, if we look back at the third command. Okay. Same form. So give good news to those who believe in you're right. So the two we have to talk to each other, talk to people. One is is see what people are doing and tell them that they will be rewarded. And here, when people encounter them again, what? Mm -hmm. It means that Allah is with you. Well, essentially, you don't have to go to a place. Well, I would say heaven's even Allah is there. You don't have to go to Jannah anywhere else. Well, essentially, you got you. Well, okay. Uh, uh, I'm, ja I'm in Jannah in my heart. <laughs> 